Hey, it's Andrew Huang. I'm so excited. This is the all-encompassing how to get started with modular video. We're going to talk about why to go modular. I'm going to recommend some of the best modules I think that would work for any beginner system. And uh, I'm also going to give away this starter system. More on that later in the video. And uh, at the end of the video, we'll talk about some of the more technical utilitarian sort of things like cases and power and all that fun stuff. Let's get into it. So firstly, why modular? And also why hardware? Because there's lots that you can do to make electronic music with just a computer. And for me, there's a lot of reasons. So modular lets you go a lot deeper with your sound design. I think it's a lot more fun. And then as far as the hardware side of the equation, I'm just trying to get away from the computer a lot of the time. I'm already on there so much for other aspects of music making, video editing, email. I really like when I don't have to be doing something on a keyboard and a mouse and a screen. And uh, also, there are certain limitations with computers for how powerful they are. If all you have is a computer, you can't turn two knobs at the same time. You literally can't do that. You can't really build muscle memory with a mouse because things aren't always in the same place on a screen. You might have windows that move around. Uh, you can't have a friend over and both really be on the computer at the same time, that's that's not fun. Hardware modular feels more like an instrument and it's also building the exact instrument that you want. Uh, you know, short of learning how electronics and design and manufacturing work, you can get all the pieces that you want to create the synthesizer that's perfect for your needs. And also you do not need some giant beast like this that costs more than your car. Probably not a wise choice for most people. There's so much that you can get out of smaller systems and the real important thing to think about there is what your goals are with modular. You know, if it's creating the perfect mono synth that has the oscillator you like and the filter you like and the envelope you like all combined into one package that doesn't exist elsewhere. Or maybe you want to build this ultimate effects unit for running your guitar through and controlling in interesting ways. I personally have a few goals. One, I just wanted a really robust sound exploring machine uh, two, I'm really interested in this weird, complicated, generative kind of music. And number three, I want to live on a spaceship. So I'm going to break down a few categories of modules that I think would find a place in almost any system, no matter what your goals are. And I'll also have some recommendations for each. I'm going to focus on things that I think are the best value, that can do a lot, you know, a lot of bang for buck. Uh, they're flexible. And also they're generally on the smaller side as far as size goes, so that you can fit more into your rack, wherever you're starting from. Also, I should mention that I'm working with Eurorack. There are a lot of different formats of hardware modular out there, but Eurorack is the most popular and probably the most versatile. Actually, I would say Eurorack is where most of the innovation is happening in music technology these days, which is part of what excites me about it. Uh, shots fired. <laughs> So first category, oscillators. Probably the most common place where you would be creating sound to uh, further manipulate with your synthesizer. So first up, the MCO from ALM Busy Circuits. This is this really tiny module that's got a digital chip in it that lets you sweep between different waveforms. There's also CV control over that. Uh, and you have three outputs on it. Besides that, you get a pulse wave version of the oscillator and also a sub for some bass oomph. The second oscillator I'll recommend is Platts from Mutable Instruments. Platts has a ton of different synthesis types that you can select between with these two buttons. On the left side, it's more like synths and on the right, it's more like percussion. Here's a fun chord one. This last one's probably my favorite, it's vowels. And let's check out the drums too. I'm gonna trigger this with uh, this pulse here. Also some like bell mallet type stuff. Thank you. 
For a filter, I think the best value you can get is Tip Top's Forbidden Planet. Let's put MCO through it. You've got a low pass, band pass, and high pass. Something nice about it is that you can use all three of those at once. So, uh, you know, we could put MCO through the low pass and Platts through the high pass. You know, we're blending between them via the filter. It also self oscillates if you crank the resonance. And then we could uh, use it as an oscillator. Moving on to effects, there's tons to choose from in Eurorack, but uh, again, I'm picking out one module that uh, does a lot for its size, so that's the Erica Synth's dual effects here. It's two channels that you can use either independently or together, and each one has eight possible algorithms, a lot of different flavors of delay and reverb. There's a crusher and a pitch shifter. Why don't we make a quick patch to demonstrate? Let's trigger these drum sounds again. I'm gonna take this sample and hold output and put it into the model input to jump between different Platts algorithms. Hear what that sounds like. There, kind of a fun little drum rhythm going. So in the first dual effects channel, I have a delay. And on the second, I have a reverb. Let's try a couple different algorithms. Lots of different sound mangling possibilities. All right, now let's talk about the plumbing. Uh, less exciting than all the sound making stuff, but it's so important. It's kind of what makes modular modular. It's the modules that create modulation. Wow, I'm saying so many of the same sounds over and over again. Module, 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 module. Jumanji? Creating modulation, controlling signals, and manipulating them and sending them all around your system. Maths from Make Noise is the most popular Eurorack module of all time for good reason. It gives you four channels of modulation, creation, and manipulation. Envelopes, LFOs, offsets, inverting signals, combining signals, slew limiting. By the way, if modular is newer to you and you're still learning some of these terms, my last video will be perfect for you. It'll get you up to speed about all the core concepts of modular. Another option for all these kinds of tricks, these two little baby modules from ALM. This is Pip Slope and the OAX2 offset and attenuvert times two. These two little guys can cover most, but not all of the same functions as mats in a much smaller footprint. And now let's move on to VCAs, voltage controlled amplifiers. Uh, there's a saying in modular, you can never have too many VCAs. And that's because they're one of the main ways you're gonna control your signals, both audio and CV. Uh, they're gonna control the volume of your audio and they're gonna control the strength or the depth of your modulation. So let's do a demonstration with the first of my recommendations for a VCA, Talon from Chaos. Let's put MCO through its first channel. So using this knob, we can control the volume. And one nice thing about Talon is that it is analog circuitry. It overdrives in a nice way, and there's different flavors of that overdrive. Really nice on bass sounds. But let's turn that knob all the way down, and we'll send a cycling function from Maths to control the volume. Now this knob is gonna control the amount of that modulation. Let me demonstrate CV processing with a VCA as well. So let's say we've got uh, this other channel from Maths cycling, and we're gonna send that to the MCO's frequency. This is gonna sound wacky. Without the uh, volume modulation, you can hear it's going all over the place. Well, what if we wanna make that more of a nice vibrato? I'm gonna take that same signal through the other channel on Talon and then send that to our pitch. So now we're controlling the amount of pitch modulation. Now actually, we could have just done this from Maths because you can attenuate that signal. 
But uh, you know, just for this demonstration, I wanted to show that you can use Talon for both uh, audio and CV. That's one important point about VCAs. Some amplifiers can only handle audio, while others are uh, DC coupled. That means that they can handle the much slower frequencies uh, that CV often occupies. My other VCA recommendation is gonna be the Quad VCA from Intelligel. This is twice the size of Talon, but it has twice the VCAs, four instead of two. It doesn't have the overdrive options of Talon, but it has this mix output, so you can use it as a four channel mixer. Speaking of mixing, if you're just looking for a pure mixing module, I really like the mix up, also from Intelligel. This is four channels of mixing, two of them are in stereo, and uh, you can daisy chain a whole bunch of these together as you want so it can grow with your system, but it's also just nice and compact if you only need four channels. Let's come back to this system that we're giving away and look at this top row of smaller modules. These are 1U modules, sometimes also called tiles. U stands for unit, and so this is standard rack units, you know, if you're dealing with rack mount gear. So in Eurorack, everything is 3U, but Intelligel have also come up with this system of 1U modules, just for some types of modules where a horizontal layout might make more sense than a vertical one in your system. Let's start with noise tools. This is one of my favorite modules. It's so handy. It gives you a clock that can be regular or random. It gives you pink and white noise. And then there's this sample and hold circuit, which in addition to the normal hold output has a slewed output. If you're not familiar with sample and hold, it's sampling voltage values anytime you trigger it. You can trigger it externally or like what's happening right now, it's being triggered by the clock on this side of the module. So every time there's a clock pulse, it's sampling from the noise circuit. So it's giving you basically a random value because noise is moving all around really quickly. And then those values come out of the hold output or they shift slowly from one to the next from the slewed output. And you can control the speed of the slew. Sample and holds are commonly connected to a noise source that they're sampling to just generate random voltages for you, but you can sample and hold anything. So to give you an example of a use case, let's say you have a melody. You could make a copy of the pitch CV, send it to the sample and hold, and trigger it less often to generate a bass line. So like maybe on every eighth note, you're sending it a trigger, it's taking whatever note happens to be in the melody, and then that's gonna be what the bass plays for the next two bars or something like that. So that's noise tools. It kind of falls into a couple different categories. So uh, later in the video, I will recommend some other clock stuff and some other random and sample and hold stuff. Uh, to finish out this row though, we've got this output module. Every synth needs something that you can uh, take the signal out from. And then we've also got this line in. So you could take sound from elsewhere, pump it through your system and process it with your modules. Last but not least, this module is called Micro MIDI and kind of like the name suggests, it lets you take MIDI from anywhere and distribute that to your system. So you've got all these possible outputs that would allow you to convert MIDI from a computer or a keyboard into CV to then distribute to your system. All right, I have a couple more categories of modules and other info for you, but now that we've covered everything in this system, why don't we talk about the giveaway? So I'm partnering with Perfect Circuit. Uh, you may remember it from my pocket operator video. I paid them a visit. Great synth shop based in Burbank, California. We put the system together as a great starter package for anybody, and we're also gonna include an Arteria key step. There is a link in the description if you wanna enter to win these. Uh, it's open until midnight PST on February 3rd. Also. Uh, if you just want to get this system, we're calling it the Andrew Huang system, uh, you can get 10% off it through Perfect Circuit if you use the code SYSTEM10. So thank you to Perfect Circuit for partnering with me on this video and this giveaway. Back to some recommendations, let's finish talking about random. My favorite random module is Chance by Qubit. I actually have two of these. I used to patch stuff that would just do exactly what Chance does, so getting it was definitely a game changer for me. Basically, every time it receives a clock pulse or you press this coin toss button, it will generate four different types of random signals across the top, as well as random rhythms. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Next category, clocks and rhythm sequencing. Pamela's new workout, also from ALM. They are just killing the game. Really great clock source. I've also got it with the uh, PX1 expander here, giving you different divisions of the clock, as well as DIN and MIDI out for the clock. Pamela's new workout is the master clock in most of my patches because it just does the job of clocks so well. You get eight different outputs of different kinds of clocks, and uh, there's so many ways that you can manipulate the rhythms. Uh, you can do Euclidean rhythms, you can do probabilities of skipping different steps. You can divide the clock, multiply the clock, change the gate lengths, uh, and there's also two CV inputs that allow you to have CV control over most of those parameters as well. It packs a ton into a very small amount of space, and I think it would be at home in literally any system, unless you never want to do anything with rhythm. As far as more like XOX style rhythm sequencing, so just turning on or off different steps, I would recommend the IntelliGel Steppy. Steppy gives you four tracks of rhythm sequencing. Each track can be up to 64 steps before it loops. Uh, you can also change the length to anything you want in between one and 64. Uh, you can do a bit of probability stuff on here as well as ratcheting. Again, packs a lot into a very tiny size. Let's move on to pitch sequencing where my pick is Qubit Bloom. This module lets you you do two different channels of up to 32 steps of pitch sequencing. Again, you can have any length in between 1 and 32 for your pitch sequences. Uh, I guess you could also just use it as a rhythm sequencer because each channel also has gate outs. You can turn the steps on and off. It's got built-in scales and ratchets and slew, but uh, probably the most exciting thing for me about it is how handy it is for generative music because you can have the patterns play back in random order. And then also there's these path branches and mutation inputs and knobs that that uh, allow you to kind of make variations on your sequence. Using those features, the module will kind of create related sequences to whatever you've programmed and then allow you to navigate through those new sequences. Or you could have it just keep on generating new ones and have variation upon variation. Uh, really fun for melodic generative stuff. But of course, if that's not what your current patch calls for, you can just use it as a really handy way to program set pitch sequences. While we're talking about pitch, let me draw your attention to Scales by IntelliGel. This is not a sequencer, but it's a quantizer. And I I think it's the best quantizer out there. Uh, so what a quantizer does is round any incoming voltage to the nearest pitch that you've set. See how these buttons are kind of laid out like a piano keyboard? You can use those to set which notes are active and then any CV you feed through scales, it will always round to those notes. A lot of fun to be had with that, either creating unpredictable melodies or turning any kind of signal into something melodic. <laughs> Now let's talk about interfacing, modules to get signals in and out of your synth so you can interact with other devices. I'm gonna recommend Poly2 from PolyEnd. This is a ridiculously robust MIDI to CV interface. For audio signals, although it can handle CV as well, I'm gonna recommend Expert Sleeper's ES9. Bear in mind, this is a USB-C connection, so uh, if you're looking for other kinds of USB, their older models, the uh, ES8, ES6, That'll get you there. These modules are basically audio interfaces though. So they connect to your computer and they can take signals back and forth between your computer and your modular, whether you wanna send CV one way or the other or audio one way or the other. So I use this on every patch that I want to record because it gives me tons of channels that I can use to multi-track things from my modular into Ableton. You can also use it to send audio from your computer to your modular for processing or really handy if you're just starting out, you can use software to generate CV and then send that to your modular if you don't have enough modulation in your case yet. I want to give a special mention to another Expert Sleepers module. This is the Disting Mark IV. It has something like 80 different algorithms in it so that it can be 
kind of anything you want it to be, but only one thing at a time. Having a disting in your system is a great way to learn. It's also a great way to kind of get familiar with certain types of modules before you spend money on another one. Before I had the mega system behind me, I would sometimes be working on a patch and feel like I was kind of stuck and then realize that the thing I wanted to do could be handled by my disting uh, because it really just covers almost everything. One more special mention, 2HP. These are the smallest modules in Eurorack and they're so handy for just being able to do one specific thing but barely take up any space. This is a filter. Low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, knob for cutoff and residence. Look at this, four channel mixer. You kidding me? These are some of the most affordable options out there and they cover all of the stuff we've talked about today and more, you know, there's an LFO, random, sample and hold. I love their drum modules. So that about covers the basics. I just wanted to talk about modules that would be good to start with and that would fit into pretty much any system, no matter what your modular goals are. But of course, there's lots of other stuff you can explore. You know, there's modular samplers and percussion voices, uh, joysticks, touch strips. You can really build any kind of electronic instrument you want. Not to mention there's all kinds of slightly more advanced CV modules like logic processors and switches and comparators and plenty of stuff to explore for a lifetime of modular fun. So modules are just circuit boards mounted to face plates and for that reason they need to be housed in something. You need a case for them. And a case can be made out of anything. The important thing is you have these rails that are spaced at the right distance apart that you can put a module on top of them like that and screw them in top and bottom. People make cases out of all different kinds of things. They make them all different sizes. Again, it's all about creating your own unique custom instrument. I like IntelliGel's cases. This was my first case, uh, their 7U case. The giveaway case is their pallet. Once you have your case, you need a way to power your modules. Uh, lots of cases do come with power like these IntelliGel ones. So the power is on this bus board here. This is mounted on and uh, you can see all these little connections that you can make with these ribbon cables that run to your modules. So on the back of the module, there'll be a connector. You put the ribbon on the connector and then the other side of it to the bus board. The very important thing you need to keep in mind here is this red stripe. The red stripe on the ribbon cable carries negative 12 volts and you don't need to really worry about what that means except that it has to be connected to a specific spot on both ends and they're usually labeled either red or they have a stripe or they say minus 12V. Connecting it the wrong way will mean that your module won't work and with some modules that don't have the proper uh, protection built into place, it might actually fry your module. Like it'll make smoke and uh, things will be damaged. Not good at all. Another form of power is flying bus boards. So that's just like this mega ribbon cable that has all of the connectors along it. And uh, it would usually connect to a power module and this would mount in your case like any other module. And then you would connect your other modules to the spots on this ribbon. So uh, it's just kind of like free floating, hanging out in your case. It doesn't have to mount to anything, it takes up less room, but also you do have to have that power module somewhere mounted in your row of modules. So it takes up a little bit of space that could otherwise be used for a more musical module. This one, by the way, is Polyens Anywhere, which uh, is actually powered off of USB. So it's nice and portable. You can get a USB power bank and just plug this in and take your case anywhere you want. One precaution you should take is looking up the power draw of your modules. Uh, the best way to do this is to find them on the site modulargrid.net. You can build a rack in there virtually and it'll tell you how much power your modules require. I've never run into a problem with this, but maybe you'll just so happen to get a whole bunch of really power hungry modules and uh, they might not work properly or at all if uh, you've got them all plugged into a bus board that isn't powerful enough. It'll also tell you how much everything costs, so don't look at that part. I think that covers it for cases and power. I just wanna end by mentioning a few accessories. So, Tip Top makes the best cables for modular. These are the uh, stackables or stack cables. I actually don't know how you say it, but they have a little opening on the back of each connector that lets you stack them up so you can make copies of signals. They're also color coordinated by length, 
which uh, I think is really handy. Uh, some people like to get a whole bunch of different cables of different colors and different lengths, um, and so they can use whatever they need to trace their signal flow across their patch, but I find everything just gets all jumbled anyway, and it's better to uh, coordinate color to length, because then you could just reach for the one that you know you need to bridge a certain distance. Uh, it just makes the patching workflow a lot faster. Nurleys. You want these uh, for screwing in your modules. They're better than other screws because they're thumb screws. Just like, look how easy that is. Much faster uh, for rearranging your modules than busting out a screwdriver every time. And my final recommendation for this video is a cable hanger. And my favorite is right behind me here. It's the Hex 01 from Eurodesk Z. This is the best thing that I've found for keeping my stuff organized and in a pretty small space. I think it holds like 300 cables or something. Don't quote me on that, but it's, a lot of cables. You gotta get something to manage your spaghetti. I used to drape my cables all over whatever was nearby, mic stands, my chair. A lot of companies make really long hangers, but I just like the compactness of this hexagon with so many little slots for as many cables as you probably would ever need. It just mounts on a mic stand, you're good to go. All right, lastly, a piece of advice. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. Go in with a goal for your system, start slowly, and uh, take advantage of all the online resources that are available. I'll link to a bunch of stuff in the description where you can learn about how modular works and also get your hands dirty uh, and actually do some synthesis with free software that's available out there. Get to know what you most want out of modular before you dive into the fun and also the expense of the hardware. If you want to enter to win this system and the key step, the details for that are in the description as well. Uh, the giveaway runs until midnight Pacific on February 3rd. Good luck. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's anything that I missed and I will see you in the next one.